Hello there folks. This quick video is going to show you how to use a Redline Data Station Plus LE product to take uh, data tags from a banner wireless DX80 system on Modbus 45 and uh, have that talk to a Allen Bradley RS Logics 5000 based product like a Compact Logics or a Control Logics PLC. <clears throat> so I'm going to use Crimson 3.0 software here and this example will use the Data Station Plus LE model. So I'll do the file pull down and I'll select New. And you can see under the Data Station Plus, I'm going to choose the LE model. Now, prior to me showing that, I just want to point out to something to you. If you look up here, previously I had chosen the GT model, and it's the full featured red box. It has all these options available. Now I'm going to select the LE model, which is just protocol conversion. And watch what happens when I hit the OK button here. You'll see that all those variations drop away because this guy just does protocol conversion. All right. So in this example, the DX80 I happen to be using uh, talks Modbus 45. So I'll click on the 45 port here. Hit the pick button right here. I'm going to go down and try to find the listing for Modbus right here. And I'm going to set up the 485 port to be a master to talk to the Banner Engineering DX80 gateway. So I'll click the OK button. And now the only thing I need to change in here is the baud rate right here. The default baud rate on all Banner wireless products is 19200. So I'm going to hit the pull down here and select 19200. And then over here on the left where it says PLC1, I might rename this DX80 underscore wireless underscore IO. Alright, so that sets up that part. Now if I go to the network setting here, this is going to be the Ethernet port that's on the red box. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on because I want to be able to talk to the RS Logics 5000 based product over the Ethernet medium. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and if you look here, this is the default IP address of the unit. So I'm going to pretend that the red box is going to be 192.168.1.20. If I go to the download tab here, I just point this out to you. This is kind of cool. If you enable this, and your first download of the product will be via USB cable, but if you've got this turned on and you have a compact flash or an SD memory card in the Redline product, you can then subsequently, uh, I can't say that word, but next <laughs> generations or next revisions download uh, over Ethernet instead of USB, which is a nice feature. But you have to have a compact flash card or a uh, SD memory card in the Redline product to be able to do that. That's because if your firmware is different than your version of Crimson 3 is different than what's run on the Redline product, then we need a place to cache memory while we upgrade or downgrade the firmware in the actual Redline product. All right, let's click on protocol one here and we'll hit the pick button here. We're going to choose Allen Bradley for this guy. There's all kinds of drivers in here, but for the RS Logix 5000 based products, which is the tag based, this is the most prominently driver that people like to use right here. It's also the most quickest one that we have. I'll click the OK button, and then I'll click over here on the left where it says PLC2. And this is right here, <clears throat> this area right here, uh, let's see if I can get this to work, is the default. IP address right here. Well, I'm going to actually make this thing be 192.168.1. Say 10 for this example. Don't forget, folks. Anytime you touch the keyboard in Crimson 3 and you type something, always hit the Enter key. That way, it sticks. <clears throat> Over here, where it says PLC2, maybe I will rename this Compact Logics underscore L32E for Ethernet. That's what we're going to use today. L32E. All right, so that takes care of setting up that. We're going to come back to this section here in a little bit where we can import the tag names. But let's first go over to RS Logics 5000 and create some tags. <clears throat> so I've got here Alan Bradley's RS Logics 5000 software. Uh, this is the current version I'm running. It's a little bit old, but it's all the same. And let's say I start a new database. File new. And I'm going to use the 1769L32E, E for 
Ethernet controller. There's a C model that's for control net. We want to be able to talk over Ethernet. <clears throat> I'm gonna slide down. I'm gonna choose the latest revision I happen to have is 19. I believe they're up to like revision 23 now or so, but I'll do that. And then right here where it says name, maybe I will just need it, rename this compact logics. Oops, can't spell logics here. L uh, 32E. All right, hit the OK button. Give it a second here to create the new file. All right, whoops, I lost it. Here we go. All right, so here's my RS Logic 5000 based program. You can see down here, I've got some stuff here. I'm going to go into controller tags here. <clears throat> if I double click on controller tags, I can then enter or create some tags by hitting the edit tags button down here. So if I hit the edit tag button, and let's say in this example that I'd like to look at some input data and I'd like to be able to turn on some outputs. Now if you're familiar with the Banner Wireless products, uh, particularly the DX80 Surecross, uh, generally you'll know that each device has 16 registers in it, of which the first eight generally are input data and the next eight generally are output type data. So I'm going to put here, uh, and they usually just, in the documentation from Banner, they basically just go IO1 all the way up to IO16. So I'm going to go ahead and create this first one, IO1, enter, and I'll go ahead and create another one, IO underscore 2, IO underscore 3, and I'll just do this for all of them. I wish there was a way to do a smart duplicate here, like there is with Crimson, but, and there probably is, I just don't know what it is because I've never attended a class on Allen Bradley software because the classes are not free. Actually, they're quite expensive, folks. Let's keep going here up to number 16 here. Okay. All right. So we've got our 16 registers here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the file pull down menu. I'll save my current program. That saves the database as is. There's really nothing in here. But and then if I go to the file pull down here and save as, you'll see down here I need to create what's called an L5K export. So if I hit the pull down here, you can see there happens to be an L5K export. Now, folks, I want to point something out to you. Depending on what revision of, of RS Logix 5000 you're using, if when you hit the pull down here, you only see these two options, you're okay. If you see this third option, this XML, well, we're going to use the L5K, but this X, this LX or L5X one, they've actually changed this a little bit. So I'm going to come back and fix this file. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm going to choose the L5K, and here's the listing of it by default, which is the same name as my project. No big deal. I'll hit the Save button. And it should have created a uh, L5K export on my desktop. Now I'm going to go back to Crimson 3. And in Crimson 3, right here where the tag management is, I'll hit the pick button, or tag management here. And then I'll hit the import button. And I want to show you something. Here is that compact logic program right here, or that database. I'm going to hit open. I want you to see what happens here. Notice when it comes in, I don't see any tags. Matter of fact, I don't see an expansion or nothing here. So what has happened is Alan Bradley has changed their software a little bit to the format is not in the correct way that our software is looking for. So I'm going to go fix that by going over to a program called Notepad. I'll open up Notepad. I'll go File. I'll open up here. And I'm going to go ahead and find the text file. It's actually it's got a suffix of .l5k here. So if I do .l5k, I can find it. And here it is, Compact Logics. Click on that button right there and click the Open button. And now it'll bring it in here. Once it brings in the file here, here's the standard look here. I'm going to go to the File Pull Down menu and I'm going to do Save As. And this time, down here where it says Encoding, this UTF-8, I'm going to hit the pull down there and I'm going to choose ANSI encoding. 
just going to call it the ANSI encoding here, a little different format. I'll leave the file name in the same name. That's okay there. Actually, maybe I'll change it so you can see the difference. I'll call this one suffix ANSI. So it's got that difference in the file name. I'll hit the Save button here. Save it to my desktop. I'll shrink this down. If I go back into Crimson 3 here and hit the Tag Management, once again, notice there's nothing here. If I hit the Import button, this time I'm going to select the ANSI version that I just did, this guy right here, and I'll click the Open button, and I'll say yes, I'd like to replace. And now, folks, if you look, you can see that the tag names uh, expanded out here. You know what I should have did? I should have called that 01. Oh, well. But here are the tag names. And so this is part one of our example here. Um, so we'll hit close. That sets up the driver to talk to the control logics. Now the goal is again to get input data from the wireless world and put it into the compact logics. And when the compact logic wants to turn something on out here to have it go out this guy. So I'm going to go over here to the wireless DX80 wireless node right here. And I'm going to grab the little slider bar over here in the left or right hand side of Crimson. And I'll slide down a little bit and way down below you're going to see a section here that says add gateway block. So I'm going to click on the add gateway block here. I get a green block underneath here. If I click on that block I'm going to hit the pick button and everything in the banner products will be in the holding registers. So I'm going to click here on holding registers. I'm going to start the first one, 40,001, and click OK. And then I'm going to say this needs to be a block of 8. So I'll change the block size from 0 to 8. And notice how you get subsequent registers, 40,001 all the way up to 40,008. These are going to be input data, meaning that something that comes into here, I want it to go into this guy. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to click on this first register right here. And if you look here, uh -huh. if you look right now, the, the registers are not showing up right here because I forgot to do this. If I go back over here to Compact Logics, this guy right here, I'm going to go ahead and add all these just one at a time like so. That way they're available to my program. And you can just add them by double clicking on them. And that should be it. Number nine is there. There. All right. We'll hit the close button. Now if we go back over to here, expand this, click on this first guy. Now I should be able to expand my Allen Bradley. So if I take this one right here, drag it right here, notice the little arrow right here. If you see there's an arrow right here, let me find the right color here. The arrow is actually going this way. It's going to take this value and put it into here. Well, that's not the right way it needs. It needs to go the other way. So if I hit the block one right here, and where it says direction, hit the pull down, choose device to G3. Now, if you look, guys, you'll see the arrow is actually going this way. It's going from here into here, which is exactly what I want to do. So then I'll just take this guy and I'll click here. And number two is there. Number three is the next guy. Four is X. Five's there. And there's number eight. That covers all the input data. Now up here where it says block one, I might rename this input data, whoops, data from DX80. Underscore, this is going to be just for the gateway right now. There it is from the gateway. Now I'm going to do the next nine. So I will click right here, back up on the DX80 gateway, and I'll slide down and I'll add another gateway block right here. And then I'll highlight this block. And this one, I want it to start at 40,009. Because if you look, there's 40,008 right there. So if I hit the pick button right here, click on the holding registers, not the 32 bit, but the regular holding registers. And right here, put in number nine this time, enter. Once again, it's going to be a block size of 8, so I'll put an 8 right there. And then if I click on my first register right here, 40,009, this guy right here, and I just basically want to double click on that guy, and then I'll go boom, boom, boom. There's number 13. Cooperate. 14, 15, 16. There you go. 
The key to this is to look at the arrows. So this is saying inside the compact logics, if one of these bits or words to go on, I would force an output in the corresponding, which is exactly what I want to do. So in this case, I'm going to say here, output data to dx80 gateway. And that should do it, folks. That'll be protocol conversion. Basically, in a nutshell, if, uh, if I turned on one of these output registers here, a wireless output would work. And back at the wireless world, if one of the input registers went on here, I would show that value here in the 1 through 8. It would actually work out just correctly. So if I was over here monitor, I would actually see those values right here. So that's just a quick example of how you can use the data station plus LE to do protocol conversion from Modbus into Alan Bradley's Rockwell software. The one key caveat to this is uh, depending on if you have a problem importing the L5K, you may need to go into Notepad and do File, Save As, and change the encoding here from the default UTF-8 to ANSI, resave the file, and then, RS, then uh, Crimson 3 will be able to import the program. Anyway, uh, check out the video, and you can always rewind it. If you got any questions, please let me know. And thanks a lot for uh, using Redline products. Have a great day.